A soil mass is composed of small solid particles which we call the soil grains. These soil grains when depositing in a soil mass arranges themselves in a way that some amount of empty space is left between them. We call these empty spaces voids. These voids or pores are interconnected and form a highly complex network of irregular tube-like structure. When water is subjected to a potential difference in the soil, it flows through these voids from high potential to low potential. The surface of the soil particles offers a resistance to the flow of water. The more irregular and narrower the voids, greater is the resistance posed to the water flowing. While more open the voids, greater is the ease with which water flows through the soil. This property of the soil which permits the water or any liquid to flow through it through its voids is called permeability. It is the ease with which water can flow through the soil. Gravel particles are large. Larger the soil grains, larger will be the volume of voids and better will be the connectivity of those pores. Consequently, large amount of water may flow through them easily and higher will be the flow of water and that we say higher is the permeability of soil. A soil has different values of permeability for the different liquids but we will focus only on soil's permeability with water. There is a huge difference in the permeability of different soils. These are the values of permeability of different soils. Gravel soils are most permeable while clay soils are least. Clay soils have high void ratio as they have a large volume of voids because of their flocculated structure. These voids look very large but it is much zoom view and because the clay particles are being very small these voids are poorly connected to each other and do not form a regular tube or channel like structure. Hence even after having large amount of voids the clay soils are very less permeable. When a soil has extremely low permeability, it is termed as impervious soil. Water in the soil flows from one point to another only if there is a difference of hydraulic head. The hydraulic head is the amount of mechanical energy available at any point in the water. From Bernoulli's principle, the total head or total energy at a given point in the fluid is the energy due to the movement of the fluid which we call velocity head plus energy from the pressure in the fluid which is called pressure head plus energy from the height of the fluid relative to any arbitrary datum which is called elevation head. Datum can be understood as any reference line or plane. Here Z represents the height or a elevation of the point of consideration from our considered datum. This total head has the unit of height such as meters. When water flows through the soils, its velocity is very small. Therefore, we neglect the velocity head. Water flows from high energy region to lower energy region. If the hydraulic head of point A is higher than the head of B, water may flow from point A to B. Similarly, if head of B is higher than head of A, water may flow from point B to A. Water does not flow if the point A and B have the same energy or have inadequate head difference. Because even if A has higher elevation than point B, the hydraulic gradient of both the points is the same. Because hydraulic gradient which is the sum of both elevation head and pressure head of both the points is same. Elevation of point A is higher than that of point B. But suppose if point B has high pressure head because of any geological confined aquifer conditions, then total head of point B may be higher than that of point A. In that case, water will flow from point B to A even against gravity. Note that fluid flows down from high hydraulic head to low hydraulic head. The change in the hydraulic head per unit distance over which this change occurs 
is called hydraulic gradient. It is written as this. Hydraulic gradient is determined by making several wells at some distances and measuring the water level in them. For example, to measure the hydraulic gradient of groundwater, we make two wells in the ground 1000 meters apart and measure the difference of water level in them. If the difference of water level in these two wells is 2 meter, the hydraulic gradient is 2 by 1000 or 0 0.002. We take a soil sample of length L and having a cross-sectional area of A. We subject it to some hydraulic gradient. We also measure the output discharge of the water through the soil. We can get the velocity of flow through the soil by continuity equation as velocity equal to the discharge divided by cross-sectional area of the soil. We increase the hydraulic gradient and for different hydraulic gradient values we note down corresponding velocity of water through the soil. We plot a graph between these obtained values of hydraulic gradient applied and velocity of flow. We will notice with the increase in the hydraulic gradient, velocity of flow also increases. We can divide this graph into three regions namely zone 1, zone 2 and zone 3. Zone 3 where the curve is irregular displays the turbulent flow of water inside the voids. Zone 1 depicts the laminar flow and zone 2 is transition zone. In laminar flow, the particles of water follow a defined path such that the path of one particle never intersects the path of any other particle, while turbulent flow is irregular. We can observe in zone 1 hydraulic gradient and velocity of flow share a linear relationship. This relationship was first observed by French engineer Henry Darcy and he proposed what is known as Darcy's law. He demonstrated after doing experiments that the velocity of flow of liquid between two points in the soil is directly proportional to the hydraulic gradient applied to it. We can write it as this by adding a proportionality constant k. k is the coefficient of permeability. v is the velocity of flow which is also known as discharge velocity or superficial velocity. i is the hydraulic gradient. From this we can write coefficient of permeability as this. Here if the hydraulic gradient is unity that is 1 the coefficient of permeability will be equal to the velocity of flow. In other words, the coefficient of permeability is the velocity of flow of liquid inside the soil if the hydraulic gradient is unity. The coefficient of permeability has the dimensions of velocity. As hydraulic gradient is dimensionless because it is length divided by length. Discharge through the soil can be written as cross-sectional area of the soil multiplied by velocity of flow. We can write the velocity of flow is this and also the hydraulic gradient can be written as. So equation will become. The flow of liquid takes place actually through the soil pores not through the whole cross-sectional area because primarily this cross-sectional area is composed of soil solids and very less area is available for the voids. But for the calculations, we have considered the whole soil area. So let's say average area of the voids is As and the flow of water in the soil pores as velocity Vs. Using the continuity equation, we can write discharge through whole cross-sectional area is actually equal to the discharge through its voids. We can rewrite it for pore velocity. Now let's apply some mathematics and powerful brainy techniques and multiply both numerator and denominator by the length of a specimen L. This is the total volume of soil sample and this is the total volume of voids. And if we write it as this, then we can see this ratio is the porosity of the soil. So we can write this equation as this velocity of liquid through voids is called seepage velocity. We know that porosity cannot be greater than 1. 
So if this quantity is smaller than 1, then this seepage velocity will always be greater than discharge velocity. To apply Darcy's law, we assume that is assumptions of Darcy's law that soil is fully saturated, which means all the voids are completely filled with water. And second one is that the flow is laminar inside the voids. For large soil particles of gravels and at higher hydraulic gradient, flow may become turbulent. For that, Darcy's law is invalid. Permeability is useful in many engineering problems. Such as, in an earth dam, we may need to estimate the quantity of water leakage through and under it. If a foundation is resting on a certain type of soil and because of the overburden pressure, if water is escaping out of the soil, we may need to know how much time in which settlement will take place, that is, the rate of settlement of a foundation or building. To keep a toxic liquid in a lagoon, we must understand the permeability of soil that how much liquid will pass through it and how much time it will take to contaminate the water table below. Depending upon the work, sometimes we need to use the soils which restrict the flow of water which are low permeability soils and sometimes we need to use soils which facilitate the flow of water which are high permeability soils. Read Soil Permeability on elementaryengineeringlibrary.com Link is in the description. Thank you.